All hail, Maester Seymour. Brave Crusaders of Spira, protectors of all Spira. Believe in the path you have chosen. Let faith be your strength. I, Seymour Guado, Maester of Yevon, will bear witness to your deeds today. Sir! What's going on? Why is Maester Seymour back in the Crusaders, eh? They're using Albed's machina. They're violating the teachings. Even going against the teachings, they're willing to risk it for the greater good. Waka, I think Maester Seymour sees that too. <laughs> Lulu! Hmm. I can only speculate. Ask him yourself. Ah, Sir Oran. It is an honor. I would be most interested in hearing what you've been doing these past ten years. I've got nothing to say about it. I see. Sir Oran must be a great asset as a guardian. Your Grace! Please, there's no need for formalities. Excuse me, Maester Seymour. Why is your lordship presently present here, sir? Please, speak as you normally would. Uh, isn't this operation against the teachings of Yevon? Aren't you gonna stop them? It's true. I should. Mm -mm. However, both the Crusaders and the Albed truly wish peace for Spira. This Operation Mihen was born from that wish they share. Although it may be sacrilege to Yevon, their intentions are pure. And I, Seymour Guado, the person, not the Maester of Yevon, as a denizen of Spira, I wish them well in their endeavor. But using Machina, that's bad, isn't it? Pretend you didn't see them. Uh. <gasps> Beg your pardon, but that's not something a maester should say. Then pretend I didn't say it. Y you're kidding. From the first time I laid eyes on him, I never did like Seymour. But you know, some of the things he said that day, they made a lot of sense to me. Yep, I concur. As much as he has the most evil theme I've ever heard, he does make sense when he speaks. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is interesting. At the end of the day, Seymour is supposed to be the kind of guy that's uh, one of the most kind of influential and important people of Yevon, you know, the, the religion. And yet he's just... Um, He's allowing this to happen, so you know this. We're going to start to see that kind of thing going on. But it's uh, it's going to be an interesting debate because um, obviously on the one side you've got the whole you know they're doing this for the greater good, and at the end of the day their intention is to to help the people of Spira, and if that means going against the teachings, then. You know, they think that it's a necessary sacrifice, and you know, there's no problem. There's no problem with that, according to Seymour. And well, I would assume the majority of people watching this video will say it sounds fine to me. But obviously, if you're a religious guy like Waka, you know, at, at the end of the day, it is what it is. If you're not allowed to use Machina, then there's no exceptions, and there's probably a reason why you're not allowed to, according to the teachings. So at the moment, uh, I side with Seymour too. He makes a lot of sense. You know, the way that he's saying it, as a person, he thinks that it's the right thing to do. But, uh, we're going to see later on as we delve deeper into the story that, you know, the whole Machina thing does genuinely have some, uh, some negatives to it as well. But what we're seeing here is like a classic, you know, is religion holding back technological and human advancement type thing. Because obviously we have a lot of people that just, you know, blindly believe in things without really understanding the meaning behind it, and uh, Waka, based on what we've seen, is quite, you know, um, okay, he's uh, religious and he's fairly well informed on his religion, but in general, 
he's quite, you know, immature and naive, so we're going to get to understand the nature of Yevon much more as we proceed. And hopefully we'll be able to make a better decision about what we think happened in the game. Is that a critical hit, or am I just doing more damage? Again, obviously, I, I use this as an excuse to charge up my overdrive for the next boss battle. I mean, in general, I'll be doing one battle each to um, to charge overdrives, and that'll be it. I'm not going to spend too much time out there with these guys. Ah, I got a. I got a bomb drop weapon. Yes. Cool. To be honest, I don't think it's of too much use around here, but I guess I could keep it equipped. Excuse me, Lady Summoner Yuna? Yes. The command center. Maester Seymour requests your presence there, ma'am. Thank you. Take that road to the command center. It's not far. We're still in the midst of preparations this way. Sorry. Okay, so Seymour's not being around the bush. He seems very interested in you already. I wonder why he's invited us I'm there. I'm just doing my job. <laughs> yeah, this little guy's called uh, Clasco. Um, he's the he's the third um, Chocobo Knight, and I always feel sorry for him. <laughs> but don't worry, don't worry, we're going to lend him a helping hand in the future. It is an honor, Sir Arn. Thanks. Yeah, now you don't have to run. Yeah, uh, I should have kept the ice sword. Damn it. Ah, oh. so these lizards are are pretty agile. They're not quite as um, the evasion isn't quite as high as the flyers, but they're not bad. These walkers taking care of business. Light ring. I'm not sure that's going to be of any use at all. To you know. Oh, slow ward. Okay, it might be. There's not too. I'm going to be honest here and say there's not too many enemies early on that can inflict slow, but it'd probably be worth a decent amount if you try and sell it. Good day, lad. <laughs> Sneak past the guards, I did. <laughs> okay, so nothing of too much interest here, but he does get some more interesting things a little bit later. These were the we these were the weapons that we got from uh, our chocobo hunting. Yeah, okay, we can just keep everything. We making a fortune with Operation Mehen prices, but you lad, you get a discount. I owe you one, eh? So there you go. That's why you want to give him kill earlier on in the game. And once we actually get to the command center, he's going to be there again, selling more stuff. So. It's going to work out for the best. Let me just save. First time players, this uh, this bit that we're on now, the Mushroom Rock, might be one of the few times that you start to, to struggle with the game because it is quite long. Yeah, it's not much help at all, actually. Yeah, there's a lot of... Um, there are a lot of encounters here, and it's quite a long road, so by the time you get to the end of it, you might be struggling for MP and stuff like that, so... It's not the the nicest place to be. Looks pretty gloomy anyway. Yeah, ambushes are not fun here. Ooh. So there you go. 360 damage from this guy and 300 damage from him. So they're pretty they're pretty strong. Um, Kimari should have 
enough to take this guy out. Yep. Oren's not going to be able to do anything. Luckily we've got that magic plus 4 upgrade, so Lulu has no problems with these guys. But there you go, 654 wasn't even an overkill. So. But there's a reason there's uh, this many random encounters here. By, by the time we get to the end of the the high road, not the high road, the mushroom rock road, whoa, there's going to be another boss, so it's in our best interest to do a little bit of leveling here. This one has 450 HP, so even Auron, I think when he attacks, he does around 100, maybe a little bit less. So Physical attacks are definitely not the way to go. And well, you get to see that every time you take one out, so it's not all bad. Okay. Entourage. Yeah, the safe sphere is quite far away, so you might find yourself having to resort to menu healing in order to keep people alive. Um, let me just check, is this a plus three or a plus two? It's a plus three. Okay, it's probably worth heading down there. Hopefully if I can get to these three nodes before the boss battle, that'd be pretty good. Okay. Again, it's just like cheer, but with uh, evasion accuracy. And Auron continues to prove that he's going to be a bit of a tank. Ah, shit, I've run out of ability spheres. So there you go. I'm going to need to face a Garuda, I think, to get ability spheres. Okay. Team's looking good. And again, you'll notice that there's a save sphere down there somewhere, but we can't get down there, so that's going to be a post-game thing. Oh shit, I should have changed my front line. Need to be careful. Yeah, we'll be able to go down to that part of the, the mushroom rock in the post-game, and there is uh, something very important down there. So those um, those spheres that you get, like the magic sphere, the strength sphere, you know, planting one of those early on in the game is the difference between having a one-hit kill and uh, and not having a one-hit kill. So it can make a, a big difference early on. It makes these kind of areas a lot easier to, to get through. Let's keep Yuna out there. Okay. Ah, uh, two ambushes. I'm not going to skip any of these battles, just so I can maybe have some more overdrives. Ah, oh, missed again. Damn. Um, there is nothing for Yuna to do. Aid us. Ah, that's good. Why was that going to stay? Well then, what next? But yeah, Lulu's got high enough MP to to deal with everything down this road, so it's not going to be a problem for her. I really need that Garuda encounter. Remedies, just in case you don't know, they um, cure all state seven remedies. So they're nice to have, they can get you out of trouble.
And I'm not sure that's the best place for Shalim to be standing, to be honest. Ah, he's missing way too many times here. It's annoying. Stupid lizard. Whoa, he failed to kill it. Damn. I don't think Oren's had any strength strength boost since uh since we've started, so. If I had given Oren the strength sphere then he'd be killing everything in one hit as well. Probably getting overkills as well. In the end, I wasn't able to stop them. As you can see. But seeing their fierce determination, I couldn't just sit there. So I decided that I would do everything in my power to help them. Yep, I did say she can be easily kind of motivated and persuaded. So she's just like, yeah, forget religion. Let's just cheer on the people using the forbidden mafia. Yeah. Oh, come on. See, so yeah, it's very odd that Kimari's doing more damage than... Um, than Auron. That doesn't happen very often. Because not a lot of people take Kimari on the... Oh, come on. That's crazy. I don't think I've ever seen Titus miss that lizard as much. I think I'm coming a little bit under-leveled than I usually am. I think if Titus could activate one more accuracy node, he'd probably yeah. be able to get it consistently. All right. At least he's getting an overkill. No, I don't want We've to talk. been expecting you. Please proceed to the command center. Okay. So yeah, we're heading towards uh, the level two spells here. So once we get those, that's gonna change things quite a bit. There you go. There's the accuracy node. Hopefully, I should be able to get the lizards a bit more easily now. What is this ability? Oh, nice. Okay. When is Aura going to get some more strength? Okay. So you see, when Auron does get strength, it tends to go up by four at a time. But even then, that's one. And then it's going to take a long time before the next node. Looking back, I probably should have given it to, to Auron, because he ends up having so much strength, I would have thought he'd be able to gain it more quickly, but... Okay, I think there's only going to be another couple of encounters, and then we'll be on to the next bit. Still no sign of the Garuda. Okay, there is an Albid Primer over here that can very easily be missed. Is there a cutscene? No. Oh, look, it's the eyeball from Final Fantasy X2. He has the same character skin. Okay, let's get that Primer. Is there any. I think there's a treasure chest down there, actually. Ah, yes. Okay. This is one enemy that will piss you off to no end. Um, just to make my life a little bit easier, I'm gonna... I'm gonna take out the red element first, and then go for this weird fungus-looking thing. Okay, so this, uh, this fungus thing has a pretty powerful fire attack. 366, I mean, that's uh, that's pretty solid. Now, 540 HP is out of the reach of most of your characters, so it's unlikely that you're going to get a one-hit kill. And it says, occasionally counters with pollen, which induces sleep. So, that is no fun at all. But you have to do something, so... 
Let me get it to do its uh, pollen counter. I'm not sure what the percentage is. I don't know if it's 50% or 30%. It should be. It's generally something like that. Okay, maybe it's a little bit less. Wow, it usually does it a lot more often. Here it comes. And when this happens, oh. So we're lucky that everyone didn't fall asleep, but sometimes everyone can fall asleep. And um, when you have this guy plus a red element, they both do fire spells, which will not wake your characters up. And they'll do 300, 350 damage a pop. So if you're not careful, this, uh, this guy and its pollen attack could uh, unexpectedly kill you. So be very careful. Obviously in future encounters Lulu can take it out in one hit, so it's not a problem, but for first-timers that can uh, be an annoying fiend indeed.